I don't. 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 So what's going on? You don't want to know. And now, Tom Zappala and Mike Lamazzo with the Sicilian Corner. Mikey. Yes, sir. So uh, how much money did you win yesterday? <laughs> Do I ask you how much money you get when you sell a book? No, no, no. All right. So mind your own business. Listen, you just said to me, you said I had a great day yesterday. At I the sent casino. you some pictures. How much did you win? That's the bottom line. He, he did okay, right? You did okay. We did okay. And you had a good day. Did you make more than 500 bucks? Uh, yes. 1000 Come on, will you? Uh, yeah, I, I did. 1500 more. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? Two grand more. That's a good day. See, yeah. there's something going on. I here. sent you a picture. I didn't. There's something going on here with him. I'm telling you, I've been saying this for years now. He's got magnets in him. I'm telling you right you now, this, Barbara, you have magnets in you because nobody wins at slot machines like you do. Something is up. The shenanigans, as the great Lou Blassie used to say. The late great Lou Blasi used to say, "I'm calling shenanigans." <laughs> no, he didn't pass. Would you say the late great? He passed from us. That's not the way people were taking it. Well, right. you got to be a little bit more precise. I would never say. All right, listen, we have time. we have a, a, a Mike and I have been trying to get this this guy on camera with us for a lot of years. Uh, he's he's someone I've known for. Years and years and years and years. And How did you meet him? It's, he grew up two streets over from me. Well, and tell and, the story when you bring him on. There you go. Well, he, he may not want to talk about that. Okay. But he, uh, he, he. What grew, do we have? Off limits. He grew a couple of streets do over. We have from off me. limits you now. You didn't read his writer. No, he didn't. He didn't. He has got a writer. But uh, oh. his his two of his cousins uh, I was very close with and hung around together. So we all kind of like you know mingled. But uh, he has become. Uh, amazing one of the greatest artists in the world and we're going to talk about some of the honors he's received and uh can you draw it all uh, i can't i, can stick, I don't have stick figures ability. but let, let's bring him i in. make stick people let's bring him that's in. about it so we are really pleased uh to bring uh some uh, enthusiasm behind it we shut have... your mouth uh oh, someone that i've known <laughs> somebody i've known for many many years uh a product of the city of Lawrence, and we're going to talk about that because he's one of uh, Giovanni De Quinto is one of only five people. Three, no, five. Three. It, it, the, the keys of the city. Yeah, five, four, three. Giovanni, Bernstein, Robert Frost, Robert Frost, Leonard Bernstein, yeah, Sully Erna, Sully Erna got the key to correct, it? and okay, that's and the one Ray. I didn't have. Yeah, so. Sully I don't God, like his music. Sully Erner from Godsmack. Yeah. Leonard Bernstein, one of the greatest composers in the history of music. Robert Frost, poet. Yep. And Giovanni De Quinto, one of the, the greatest world. global expressionist artists in the world. What does global expressionist mean, uh, G? G? Well, I sort of co coined the phrase. Uh, you know, in, in, in the books, they had me as an American expressionist. This, like right, right around the time I did the the um, the, the the commercials for New Balance, um, I I started to see like like it it was expanding really quickly, and you know my message has always been global, so I I had to move from the North End into like downtown Boston, and I just thought in the move I'm gonna upgrade what. I'm gonna upgrade my image, do 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 certain things to like get get it out there a, a, a little easier to how how the technological age is working, you know, and and get in step with it. Geo, uh, you have, I mean, touched. You know, I was I was on your website, and I can't believe the the people that you have done work for uh, throughout the world. I mean, some of the greatest names in entertainment some of the greatest names in sports uh politicians can you tell us i mean how did that all evolve and tell us about some of some of the the uh 
the real heavyweights that you've done so, work for. So I'm going to back that up a little bit, and then I'll get into it. So what, when we were all coming from Lawrence, and I, I first came to Boston, um, uh, I didn't even know what a gallery was. I, I was all, I used to study with Guy Panisi on Common Street. <laughs> I remember Guy, sure. Yeah, so like I would go there every week, and I would even – Sweep his floors. I didn't care. I'd do anything. Like even when I came to Boston, same deal. And I didn't really know what 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 the the, the art of business was, but I I knew that I that if I was going to make any kind of mark, that I'd have to do something like out of the ordinary. So, but <clears throat> I started to get I started getting into like. The Fog Museum at Harvard, the MIT Museum, and, and I started going after them. I didn't even know that you had to go to galleries before you went to these places. And I got into like, I think I was like 22. I was already in the Smithsonian and uh, got into all these places. I said, just, just. I said, I, I think I have to go to school and become like what people are looking at. Like and and what my credentials are starting to be, I have to back that up by be, becoming an expert. And I, I went to college for like seven years, um, and and in between all that stuff, like things like this would happen because I was in the Smithsonian. The White House called my. Call, this is a funny story. The White House calls my. Uh, I'm in the senior year of at BU, and I, I accelerated for three years through their program. And then they sent me overseas and all this other stuff. So, but the the White House calls and it was a rotary phone. So I picked up the phone and I thought it was my friends like fooling around. So I hung up on them. <laughs> and the lady called back. She said, no, this is a, a, a call this number. And lo and behold, it, it's uh, the White House. <laughs> they wanted me to paint um, Reagan for you know, had had just gone out of office and they were looking for candidates to do that. And so I sort of invited myself down to the White House, uh, met with Rex Skelton, who had, was the curator of the White House since Truman. So he had been there for years and years and years. And he really liked my, he was the one that picked my work. And um, I don't know if it was because I was a brat or brash or what, you know, in there, I was still, like I still had a lot of Lawrence in me, and and, uh, and and he took a liking to me, and he became my mentor. So I was going down there every three or four weeks, and he got me in with the, with the bushes. You know, I did a, did a bunch of uh, I did a, a bunch of stuff for the bushes, and then when he went to go uh, back into uh, office, and they had the thing down in the Houston Astrodome, they had me do a fifteen foot painting and. You know, I sat down with him and had had breakfast with him and and and, and Barbara because we had we created a relationship for over over the, that uh, course of time. And they put me on a sixteen. Uh, uh, they put me on a sixteen uh, uh, country tour where I toured to help uh, raise money for the physically and mentally handicapped. Amazing stories. Amazing. Yeah. Gee, at a young age. Tell us about the European portion. How did you wind up in Europe? Can can you tell us how that evolved from BU into Europe? Yes, I can tell you exactly, and I'm going to be honest. All right. So, so I was a senior, and and you know I had won all the awards and did all the stuff, and they they wanted me to go to their graduate school, and I I said to them, I already know what you know. I need to like go somewhere else. It's going to be too repetitive, and you know a Lawrence kid cannot be <laughs> at the point that they will get in trouble. All right? <laughs> and I've always tried to like be one up and make sure that like you know I'm I'm kept busy because <laughs> if you keep me busy, there's not going to be any trouble. <laughs> Otherwise, and you know the real reason why I learned how to paint is in time out because I've been in time out more than not time out. <laughs> That was a question I was just going to ask you. <laughs> no, no, Why are you I'm, interested in painting? You got to keep me really busy, and if I'm really busy, then there's no problems. You know? I'm looking at. So let me let me finish. So what what, what was I, okay? I'm having a moment here. What was the question? How you wound up in Europe? So, I I was 
I was going to go to um, I was going to go to um, Yale, and and they sort of blocked that. They said, "No, we want you to stay here." And when they did, I told them, "Like, there's no way." I was going out with an actress out in L.A., and she actually went down to uh, Silva's office and told them all about me. And about two days later, I get a call from Silva, and he says, "You know, I, we're starting schools at Oxford." and at the University of Padua, and you know, like I've gotten nothing but good reports about what you've done for the university. Um, and I got into a bunch of museums while I was in school too. Like I, I can't stop myself. So, so, so I said, well, you know, if, if I'm gonna go anywhere, I'm gonna go to Italy. Cause like, you know, there was a childhood dream. All of a sudden I'm in Italy and uh, they, they did the whole thing, they gave me, Money for food, for girls, for this, for that. It was like, thank you. You know, I was, I had a full card. I was happy. So, you know, <laughs> they gave you money for girls? <laughs> I mean, you got to have, if you don't have pretty girls around, I mean, what are you going to do? Well, you know something. Because I know I will get in trouble. Gee, right. I, I've got to tell you something. I've seen some of the uh, events that you have participated in with some beautiful women. And it's like, some really, really, really creative stuff that you've done. Well, my mother, my mother and father were dancers in Hollywood, and my sisters sang with with Tom Jones, and they were very, so I was surrounded by beautiful women all my life. You know, it just and it's not because it's I don't I, it's it's because I enjoy I really enjoy um, their nurturing spirit. You know, I had such a crush on your sisters when I was a kid. They were beautiful. Everybody in the neighborhood had a crush on your sisters. Oh, yeah. They, were, they yeah. were gorgeous. They were gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, they both won. Yeah. They, they were six feet tall, and they had, like, really, like, they were lanky. And they, oh, they were. They were just oh, models. They were models, both of them. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Go ahead, Mike. I, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, the period do you like to do the most? Would it be, I know you went to Italy to study, uh, the Renaissance period, does that? So, you know, the whole, the whole beginning of my technique and, and really my, 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 uh, I, I, I made it towards the Renaissance and it, my whole focus in, 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 um, in, in graduate school was the Renaissance, but civilization development as well, so that I could start putting the cards together that make what our civilization is. Because art is a language and it changes, but it doesn't change that much. It, it changes and the rules change and, and, and the sequencing changes and, and, and how, so I went, I, I always hung around the uh, media lab at MIT. Because I figured if I'm around smart smart people, it will rub off. And <laughs> how did that work out for you? <laughs> it did. Uh, I, I think to a certain extent, it worked out pretty good. I so, think so too. So, so um, we they were working on sensory perception machines, and I was working out this technique that I'm doing, and it starts with the the Baroque painters and how they laid down their 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 beginning. Everything I think is really important in art is the, the, the way you begin something. And if you could begin it the right way, you, you'll be able to get to the end zone. A lot, a lot of what you see in, in the art world now is just the beginning with no second and third act following it. So very flat, very... Um, um, so what, what I did was I, I actually like reversed it. I, I went backwards with their technique and then added a step to it. That extra step actually brought in how the how the impressionists uh, uh, utilized their their their, their um, uh, communication. And I think with the impressionists, you know, you're, you're actually breaking down uh, the 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 three primary colors into like uh, in, into a format to be able to guide you through the painting. And it's under underlying. So a lot of what happens in art. That that's in stages is underlying and it builds towards a crescendo. Build on it. You know, I just wanted to follow up with that question, uh, G, because when we look like at the 15th century, 16th century, you mentioned colors a few seconds ago. To be able to create the type of colors that they worked with, and most of it was because of plants and berries and whatnot. How impressed are you with 
the way the colors were formed. Back then, you mean? Yeah, back then. Yeah, good point. Good question. I mean, I, I'm I'm in a different place now. Um, when I, when I, I was obsessed with the with the masters for like, I'd say going on like almost, it was like almost 35 years where I was obsessed with. And you know, I I funny story. All right, I had a I had a show in in Lexington, and I had all my paintings up. And they thought I was dead because <laughs> <laughs> I painted like the old masters. I mean, they were, you know, and, and we got a we got a painting into the Museum of Fine Arts. And they thought when the guy brought it over, they thought and that I was still doing cl classical work. They thought Giovanni de Conto was a Rococo painter from the 17th century. <laughs> oh my! I say no, please. I need your help. <laughs> I'm still alive. I'm here. That's funny, huh? That's hysterical. Yeah. Uh, G. Story, oh, I believe it. G. You've worked. Uh, actually, let's let's do this, David. We have some of your some of your work, G. And you know, we're going to talk about it uh, as as we go along over the course of the show. Yeah. Uh, can you bring one up, uh, David? All right, so this is this is one. No, can you go oh. back? Okay, let's. What are we doing here? Yeah, right there. All right, so let's talk about this. Now, this is a beautiful rendering of John Lennon that you did for somebody. Can you? I, I did that for Doctor David Zakowski. He's the head research doctor for cancer at Harvard University. So, so this painting yeah. is hanging, okay. so this painting is hanging in his house. In his yeah. So, gee, a painting like this, and notice the light, the way, the way they have the light. That, that's it. nice the way they, they yeah, present that. Nice so, did he he commissioned you, and he said, Giovanni, I really like you to do something on John Lennon, or did you make the recommendation to him? Uh, I can't. <laughs> you know, we, we I can't remember, it, but I have a whole. I have a whole collection that he, I think he bought like 40 paintings, you know? Really? Uh, yeah, he's he, a close friend and, and an average uh, collector. Interesting. Uh, can you bring up another one, Dave? All right, so now this is called, this is is what you call, and this uh, this is unfinished, right, G? But yeah, that's way unfinished. There was a, it's a painting of Tesla, Nicole Tesla, that I did for, uh, uh, for, for this, um, for this uh, real estate company, this big, this giant real estate. Company. Now, is that called mixed media? No, that that actually that painting actually at the end of it actually um, it it becomes four different paintings. So I learned how to reverse this whole technique. I haven't really let it out to the public yet, but my paintings don't need light. They can actually like exist in the dark. So what and what I'm trying to do with that whole thing. Is is like everything that I do. I studied the retina and how the retina reacts to everything. So even when I'm when I'm painting with no with no tool with no tools, it's because number one, I w I want the paintings to be very visceral, but I also and, and textural. But I also want to show the process. I want to I want I and there's so many underlying uh, things that happen before I reach that. That it's it's almost like it's almost like all the art history is in each painting. Gotcha. You know, I was just curious, how large is that painting? Good question. That's like eight feet by eight feet. That's what I thought. Yeah, um, Ellen and I, Ellen and I were in G Studio about three weeks ago, and you know, he just made a comment that blew us away when we were there. Gee, you just lightly touched upon your artwork not needing light. And he showed us a couple of pieces. That's amazing. Uh, no, I'm talking, Mike. He yeah. showed us a couple of pieces that he shone a light on briefly, shut the lights off, and the the, the painting remained lit. It remained lit. John, can wow. you can you go over that technique, or is that pr proprietary? Well, I, you know, my lawyer is telling me that I should patent that whole thing. I'm I, I'm not sure if you can patent a a, a way of artist works. Um, I, we're gonna we're gonna look into that very shortly. Um, one one of the things that I think is very important, and when you see these people putting these headphones on, and and so I'm doing that. With, I, I'm trying to follow. I, I, I'm gonna back up a little. Yeah. When the impressionist actually broke 
the, the stage. And, and one became geometric, the other became like um, atmospheric. And you know, each one, there were four different uh, ro roads that we went down to further uh, our thinking and art. I think technology actually took the lead in that break. And that's why we were in the technological age right now, because if you look at movie screens like that, they're, they're all pixelated. And and pointillist was 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 the was one of those ways of looking at things. So it opened the door to, to you know not only the industrial age but the but the age that we're in right now. Very cool. Um, we, we are chatting with uh, Giovanni De Cunto, uh, famous famous expressionist, uh, and Lawrence Bond and Bread. That's what I love. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. We're going to continue with Giovanni. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Looking for that something special? All of us here at the Sicilian Corner suggest trying Ristorante Uno, located at 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. For the most exquisite dining experience in an intimate setting that serves authentic regional Italian cuisine and features old country service, try Ristorante Uno. Did we mention their award-winning wine cellar? Ristorante Uno, 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. Call 617-573-9406 for reservations. That's 617-573-9406. Tell them the boys from the Sicilian Corner sent you. Today. 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 Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. Italian artisan cuisine combines simple fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb while a pasta maker creates fresh fettuccine. More than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603-952-4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience Artisan Italian. Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine is pleased to announce the opening of their American College of Radiology accredited MRI unit at their location at 16 Vellum Road in Salem, New Hampshire. So now, in addition to receiving the best orthopedic care in the Merrimack Valley, as well as physical and occupational therapy at Optima Sports Therapy and Rehab, you can also have your MRI all in one convenient location. The doctors and staff of Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine have been dedicated to providing outstanding medical care to the Merrimack Valley in southern New Hampshire since 1984. Located on Route 97, just off exit 2 from Route 93 North, on the second floor of the Workout Club of Salem. You deserve the best care, and that's exactly what you'll get from the board-certified surgeons at Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine. Please call 603-898-2244 to schedule an appointment. A loyal sponsor for the Sicilian Corner is Hilton Oil Company. Hilton Oil has been located right across from the South Lawrence Common since 1932 at 101 South Union Street. Hilton Oil Company specializes in 24-hour burner service, oil deliveries, including automatic deliveries serving all the Merrimack Valley area, plus portions of southern New Hampshire. If you want your car fixed right the first time, bring it to Hilton's state-of-the-art service station. Remember, Hilton's is also a mass state inspection station. Hilton Oil Company, 101 one South Union Street in Lawrence. Call 
This is Cindy and Mike Kunzla, owners of Grazia Italian Restaurant in Dracut, Massachusetts. The hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. In addition to spectacular views overlooking our golf course, we have an incredible Italian chef, Benny Curdy. Benny was born and raised in Italy and came to be our executive chef in 2013. Benny is so passionate about cooking. If you haven't experienced the food at Grazia Italian Restaurant, you're truly in for a treat. Grazia Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club. Uh, back. Do we do we lose Gio? Oh, there he is. There he is. Good looking dude. Gee, you're a good looking guy. You know that? Cut it out. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> hey, Mike Mike had a good question. Oh, away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Mike had a question. That was, uh, yeah. I was curious. You know, I was looking at that John Lennon picture. When when you work painting. Painting. When when you work on a project like that. Do you do several projects at the same time, or do you can do two or three when you feel like? Oh, one. Oh, one. I, you know, I have work started in different stages, and you know, like right now, I think we have like five or six paintings I'm working on. One is twenty feet tall, twenty feet by ten feet. The other one's like unbelievable, smaller. The other one's bigger. The other, you know. All, all different uh, uh, problematic uh, situations. So, G, what, 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 so what do you get inspired? Yeah, kind of. What do you get inspired? Like, for instance, if you're working on five different when ones. When you talk about inspiration, I think it's because okay. you guys um, don't understand what painting is. Because if you wait to be inspired, you're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what is inspiration? I don't get it. <laughs> I've been painting like my whole life since I've been five. <laughs> I, I, you know, when people say that, oh, how long did that take? Like, what? How? How can I? How can I judge that? Because as soon as, as soon as I start getting the idea, I start formulating how I'm going to attack the thing. How? What? What? What stages it has to go through? How it has to like yeah. interpret itself? You know, how, how? How? And when the viewer sees it, one of the things with my paintings is is that like, I I'm trying to be more in the age that we're in right now is that my paintings like are left open through the way I paint so that your interpretation could actually build the story and, and bring energy to the work at the same time that I painted the work. So it's like a, a give and take be, be, with the, with the, with the viewer or the, uh, I, I was wondering, you ever wake up at two o'clock in the morning and decide you want to paint? Paint? Yeah, all, all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. G, uh, is, can you give us, uh, tell us some of the famous people. Listen, I know. I mean, because. Uh, oh, I mean, you know, it started out with uh, Harold Edgerton, the guy, the guy that uh, developed Stravosity. He worked with Einstein and, and Jack Cousteau. And that was the first museum I got into. I, I painted him. But how about some of the famous people you've worked with? So the famous in what way? Like Shaquille Whether they be entertainers or something. When Shaquille O'Neal um, uh, uh, retired from the basketball, funny story. I'm I'm in the I'm in the pit with Paul Pierce, all right? And I came early because, you know, they were going to unveil my painting, and I came early. And so P Paul Pierce is looking at me, and I'm saying, who's this dude? <laughs> 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 you know, I, yeah, and so, you know, about 10 minutes go by, and I, I wanted to break the ice. You know, we the only two there, right? He was sitting on my left, and I was sitting down the end yeah. waiting for Shaquille because I just wanted to unveil the painting and get out of there. So, so I turned to Paul, and I said, I heard you are really good at basketball. <laughs> Beautiful, dude. Oh, yeah. He looked at me like, oh, oh, kid, you're going to die. I said, oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, do you work with Shaquille? Yeah. Uh, so, I, I, so I did the painting for Shaquille. And fun, funny story with Shaquille is that Shaquille, I was going to the art store, and I'm driving back from the art store to get my, uh, you know, some paints. And this number came up, and they said, hey, man, how are you? So I said, Hey man, how are you? <laughs> and I said, "What's up?" And he said, "What's up with you?" I said, "No, what, how can I help you?" He said, I, "I I have a picture I want to paint it." 
I said, just show me the picture. It was freaking Shaquille. You know? <laughs> wow. wow. That's funny. So yeah, what a nice, you know, all my clients like Doc Rivers and um, like uh, uh, Jamie Foxx just, just got a, my painting of uh, uh, a painting. And um, uh, uh, Jamie was uh, Michael Jordan, right? Or was it Kobe? It was Kobe, the first Kobe. I was in, I was in, we were in uh, this, this, uh, this, whatever this was time out for the world, you know, which, which made me feel at home, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a strange dude with strange, you know, the, the wires are all crossed. <laughs> so you did, you did, you've done things for him. You've done, yeah. I know you've done a lot for Ernie Bach. But Ernie Bach, yeah. What a great guy. Um, I did the, the father and the grandfather for their Subaru um, headquarter, world headquarters. And when I was there, then the sisters, of course, wanted painting. So I ended up painting for, for them for quite a while. Tell us about your uh, your time at Miralago. Who? Didn't you do something for for President Trump? Well, he wasn't the president at the time. But yeah, no, I did that because I, uh, Ernie, like, that was part of Ernie's thing. Ernie oh, was yeah. painting and had me paint him. And then the, the president walked by me one time and I had the painting. I was standing there and I said, this, this guy's like a little, what, what a little, like, I'm not, <laughs> so, so I'm, I, and I had, I had like, I had to like do this pr pretty quick. So I was like, my patience wasn't up to like where it should have been. And, and my staff like went running, up, running around after him. I said, like, don't do it, you know? Like, what are we doing? I said, get back to where we were. I had my lawyer with me. So my lawyer went, Ernie said to see Giovanni. <laughs> and Trump went into his attention stand and came over like, and he, he, I think he, he he signed the painting on the top. He signed the painting. We, so that painting's probably worth a million bucks right now. Yeah. I was telling them to sign it at the bottom. We already started to have, have a little fight because I wanted them to sign it at the bottom. He, I, for some reason, didn't want his tie to get in the paint or something. I, I don't know what it's from. But, you know, so anyway, we got... We got he was the, a big guy, huh? Huh? He was a tall man, wasn't he? I, I, I didn't really... I, I was just... He looks big to me. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I he don't looks know. like he's over six foot. We are chatting with uh, Giovanni De Quinto, uh World famous. One of, the, one of the nicest people was Tom Cruise. Oh no! Kidding. Now, what did you do? Oh, for I, really, I really, 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 really like him. He was such a, a really nice. I, I mean, I don't know what all that other stuff is, but like you know, you can't really like get into people's personal like uh, kind of how they react to this world because we we just do what we have to do to like be able to sustain ourselves. And you know, because I think you know, and the world is changing so much that all of those all those things are gonna break down even more and become other things. Uh Katie Holmes, I've painted twice. So like uh uh Jamie Foxx was going out with her and wanted a painting of her too. And I had one that I did uh, with, with Tom Cruise. I, I have a question for David. David, I don't know if uh, if you can spin magic. This is like this may be a reach, but um, I want we we want to talk about a little later on. Uh, talk about Gio's uh, Giovanni's uh, experience working for New Balance. There is a YouTube video that's about a minute and a half long, and if you type in Giovanni New Balance, is that a is there is there any there a couple of them? Yeah, let me look at it. Yeah, the one you know the one I'm talking about. G, there's one. Yeah, that so what, what happened was the production company. I didn't have anything to do with New Balance by the way. So uh, the production company, I had, I had like, um, you know, there was a designer that introduced me to this, this uh, movie guy and the movie guy came to me and he said, you know, it was the world cup. It was, yeah. so they said, we have this thing over, over in, in Brazil. Could you go over there with us? And you, we're going to do this thing. And I said, yeah, great. You know, so sure. we're going to signing up and doing all the stuff. ABC stole the idea. So like, uh, they found out what we we're gonna do, and they actually did it. So I got bumped, and so I said, "Here, here we go again." You know, let's get bumped. Tomorrow. Yeah, but didn't didn't New Balance? So, so, wait, a so wait a second. He had the client New Balance. Oh, okay, doing the stuff with Aerosmith and all those like all those videos with them. Yeah. 
And so he said, okay, why don't we just do it for New Balance? And, and he created this whole scenario. And Which was I, fantastic, by the way. It was a fantastic production. And I know the whole tie-in. Those was, guys won over, over 80 Emmys. I mean, this kid is so. I, yeah. Wow. I mean, well, what, was the, like, wow. You know, he's the, yeah. one of the whole tie-in, though. The whole tie-in with him and New Balance in Lawrence was fantastic. I, again, I don't know if David can bring it up. If he can, uh, then he's a miracle guy. He's working on it. So no, that's good. no pressure. No pressure. No, it. that's okay. You know, something that's good. Um, hey, I, I, you know, behind you, we're looking at some paintings that you did. And before we went on the year, you explained to Tom and myself that you paint with tubes. I, I find that absolutely amazing. Everybody does. Well, here, here's the deal. You know, I do abstract paintings and, you know, my influences are like uh, very, you can almost go by order. Jackson Pollock to, to Michael, ja uh, to Michael, uh, Michael, uh, Angelo to, um, you know, and, and everything in between. Like, yeah. yeah, I'll take everything because it's all energy, energy and power. Uh, uh, what we tr what what I try to work with to get uh, my work to to human beings because like when when there's energy in a work then it'll get people to think and then respond to the process and you know I, it creates culture too. I mean, look at the detail. Oh, it's now, a, I mean to do it what it's I mean with a tube. You, it's amazing to watch. That's something. That that gee, I, I've said this, I can't believe I've that. said this to you before. Listen, you're a, okay. Hold on, we're gonna can, can we pull this off, David? I don't know. What did it just do? Uh, you oh, have to hit is. you have to hit play and the uh, and the yeah, uh, speaker. Hold on, let me go to hit the browser. Yeah, and the speaker. Yeah, there you go. Turn it up. Come, I can't hear it. Oh. He's got to turn it up. I know. We're, we're, yeah. he's, he's well, it's to. the audio. If I change the audio, though, I'm going to lose you guys. Hey, Lost oh. Massachusetts. Well, Lost. okay. You know something? Then just you can just look at it. it, it it's a beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, look at uh, the way it highlights the city. Yeah. Oh, so what, what happened um, uh, is that once we got everything set, and I sat, you know, they sat and they said, "Okay, we're going to go through this, and this is the script." This this guy was very. He knew, he, he wow. somehow knew he would piss me off, like, if he just said, like, people don't think you're really good. <laughs> and so there was a boom right on top of, like, where I was sitting, and I pushed it away. <laughs> and I was ready to get up and just walk away from the thing. And and there was camera two and three. And out of the corner of my eye, when I did it, I saw a glint in the guy's eye, like something special had just happened. I, I mean, the music and, and, and so your narrative, G, your narrative is fantastic. The way you presented it, and it all the, was acapella. It, there was nothing written. It all came out like that, just, whole, that whole campaign. And I had to sign disclosures because I was doing Made in America, and and uh, they changed it to All in Beta because Trump was, uh, was coming out. And and they thought that I would be like uh, a Trump was, supporter. I, I yeah. Uh, and uh, it had nothing to Amazing. do. With that. All right. Isn't that a great piece, though? Oh yeah. I mean, it, and if people want to see this, David, where do they go? Right on YouTube. Let's go right to on, the, on YouTube. Go to YouTube. YouTube. Search I, have a, I have. I think we have a whole uh, Carissa. We have a whole. Um, we have a whole channel on YouTube. Right? Yes. They, I, I, I yes. On my you, website too, GiovanniDeCunto Correct. You can go on YouTube. Hey, David. Can we bring David? Good work, by the way. Very Thanks. good work. Can we bring up uh, another image uh, uh, of one of his paintings? Or, no, is it, okay. This this one here intrigued. Well, actually, both of these really intrigued Ellen and I when we're in when we were in a couple weeks ago. Gee, first of all, can you tell us about the one? in the back that was mind-blowing so that that one in the back is about man's past present and future it has to do with all numerology like this there's uh all, all the numbers that make up the universe like in, in sequence and and the the binary system is way in the back that's going to actually glow in the dark at the end of it so i'm still building that that I, each time i do one of those paintings to try to integrate the, the the other side of my painting so like it's everything is backwards and forwards what's in with it with within the same like uh 
uh, area of understanding. So you just got to back it up and bring it forward at, at, at different points. Now, what about the one in the forefront, red lipstick? That, that has to do with what? Okay, so this is where I might get in trouble. But you know, be careful. That's going down to Boca Raton to to, to Keith. Uh, to Keith, uh, one of my collectors and 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 really close friends too. I, when people get a piece of my work, then I, I they, they're part of my family. I, I just they have part of my soul in their room, so it's like you know, um, I, I have to like you know, uh, that that deals with when you first. I, I'm still dating. I was married to a a, a pop star in Brazil for uh, several years and living in Rio de Janeiro. Which twisted me up even more. <laughs> <laughs> but here I am. All right. It's a dirty <laughs> job, but somebody's got to do it. Right. Someone had to do it, G. Yeah, she was like thirty-five years younger than me. It was awesome. <laughs> hey, God bless you. Kim. It was awesome. It was. It was. I would still be there. She, her, her career was there. Mine was here, and we, that's the only reason why we're right. pretty much not together. You know. I um, listen. Uh, that gonna... goes with uh, simplicity, duplicity, and multiplicity. As you know, begin to know a person, the person changes, and that's that's right. what that painting that All that's right. user painting. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. We're going to hit a few more of uh, Giovanni De Quinto's wonderful works. Uh, talk about what the future holds, because uh, we've talked, G, and you're 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 starting to really really expand uh, your horizons on your work, and I find it very very intriguing. So we're going to take in the marketing as well, because I never really like set out to to market my stuff. I just wanted to create it. And now, I, I because of the way the world has changed, I, I feel like it's very important for me to get that message. And, and, they're, and they're beating yeah. down the doors. But let's do this. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. we got one more segment with Giovanni De Quinto. This is David from the Sicilian Corner. You know Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach, but we love different things, and we can never agree. Tom likes the casual family-style dining with great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Grill. Me, I love the elegant romantic vibe, Sea glass with the amazing view and terrific menu with prices that'll make it the place you want to visit every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of an even cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites, and the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Music Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is the host of all these great places and they treat everyone like they're Mike Lamazzo. And best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once and all of this fun is right at your fingertips. We can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out about all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappala. Located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, the Haverhill Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Haverhill Beef offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy chairman reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at w www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Deborah Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Deborah K. Law Offices today in Massachusetts. 978-686-4645 in New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. 
This is Cindy and Mike Kunzla, owners of Grazia Italian Restaurant in Drake, Massachusetts. The hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. In addition to spectacular views overlooking our golf course, we have an incredible Italian chef, Benny Curdy. Benny was born and raised in Italy and came to be our executive chef in 2013. Benny is so passionate about cooking. If you haven't experienced the food at Grazia Italian Restaurant, you're truly in for a treat. Grazia Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club. Okay, we are back. We are chatting with uh, Giovanni De Cunto, uh, global expressionist artist, a product of Lawrence, Massachusetts, one of four people to get the key to the city. Uh, you know, gee, before I know Mike has a question, but how did that make you feel getting the key to the city I and wanted, being? I want when I was a little kid, I wanted that key. Really, really. Yeah, crazy. Wow. It's crazy. Like after that commercial, you know, and I don't know what I'm supposed to mention or not supposed to mention about the whole thing, but like, like it was an angel that came and actually like when that happened, I think what it did was it, it brought the information that I'm supposed to bring to the world that much closer to where I have to bring it because you know being an artist is not just doing the paintings it's you have you have to be a responsible um if you're a messenger because that's what artists like are, are supposed to be they're supposed to tell you what's going to happen next where we're going how we're doing it we're like the scouts to the how 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 um uh when 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 civilization is is developing where the indians where, where all the strong points and weak points are and right. i've really tried to like be be as exact with that as i could possibly be well we were there mike and i were there the night you got the uh the key to the city and everybody was so proud of you you know what the best part of that night was everybody all of your friends that some of you hadn't seen in years and years and years, if you recall, turned out for that. That was just a uh, great. That was a great that night. angel. That's all, and that will come out in the news at some point. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I will. I will unveil that at some point. When, <laughs> what year was that? Uh, yeah, probably about about five or six years ago. Gene? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Mike. Uh, how Go much ahead. of an influence did the city of Lawrence play in your career? Well, I mean, you know, you couldn't. Uh, it's a tough one, yeah. Yeah, it's a tough one because I mean, there is. It, it was like you know, you know, one of the high points of 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 the industrial revolution, and you know, all, all of the remnants that came from that. Even though the people that were working there might have been from the peasant stock. They brought to it a certain like um, a certain grit and a certain determination and a certain uh, 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 to go forward at, at all costs. You know, so you can feel that in your DNA. It's absolutely. you know something. That's a great point. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. I mean, you were twice. Well, it took me a few seconds to figure this. No, out. but so I mean, you're going. You're talking about going oh. back, like to the bread and roses, a uh, uh, strike, yeah, sure. and the and the and the immigrants, and how so high we're all part of that. That's yeah, all. You know, yeah. the past, the past, and and you know, it, when I started studying at the universities, and you know, the past is so so important to what we're doing now because if you if you realize that like. The only differences that we have in mankind is, is where we're put on this planet from how the sun hits us and from what direction it hits us. Because we take on certain attributes, certain certain ways of, 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 of conducting ourselves because we have to create the environment that, that the sun is, is applying for us at, at that certain point. And if you go around the world, you'll see that people on all sides of that defend themselves because like, they they feel like 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 it could be like some think that they're more important because of the way sun hits, but the the sun gives us life, and it's it's really the most base point of how we exist. And if you just realize that the past is all the cultures that like like from around the world that the that that were built from from these different views of the sun gives us a, an inside view of how the universe is made. 
And then when we fight with each other about it, we actually like start to um, di disintegrate our, our, our abilities to go forward. And, and going forward, you know, we've created like artificial intelligence that actually is taking over in certain ways because we don't have a culture that's strong enough in the world because we, we hold on to our own views and where we created this artificial intelligence that will, will, will actually guide us so that we don't fight with each other. You know, you don't, you don't fight on Facebook. Right. Like the kids right. don't fight on Facebook. Right. But if you go down on Common Street, you will have a fight. Right? <laughs> That's a good so, you know, like, like um, this media, and, and, and I think the way, the way like, we, we, you know, we're, we're, we're generations locked into the same, you know, we, so, some of us come from the Industrial Revolution, and then the kids are uh, in, the, in this, this techno thing, and we're saying, oh, you don't, you, you don't feel that? You're not reacting to that? They don't have to because they didn't have to go on the freaking street and fight with somebody to get to where they are. You're making a good point. It's just that they're there and, you know, they're as responsible and, and, and heads up as anyone. Matter of fact, they have more responsibility because, you know, they're inheriting a new age. And that new age is going to change more rapidly for them than it did, ever did for us. Yeah, it is happening. So we have to pay a lot more attention to how things are, are being laid, the tracks are being laid down. So you, you guys got, and the world's got to start. There's no, there's no, these guys are lazy. They're, they're, they don't have to do the thing. That, they don't have to like, because it, it's right there. Right. Yeah, I can right sense. There, you know, and they have to, they have, it's it's a point of like how, how, how to, they convey things in a different way. So, and, and we have to adapt to that if we're going to be part of the solution. You know, a few minutes ago, you said the past is so important to us. And I agree with you 100%. To mankind. To mankind. To mankind. Right, right. Yet, there's a motion and a movement that's trying to dissolve our past. Well, and you know something? It really bugs the living bejeebus out of me. It's fear, it's anxiety. You know, they might have had. Uh, everybody's had bad things that happened in 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 the past, and if you focus on those, then you're going to have more more of a, a crust to going forward to to what's going to happen in the world next. Because you know, we can't stay like this. We're either going to be destroyed, or we're going to. You're making a good point. Boy, oh boy, you right on. All our cultures. Gee, we've got about three minutes left. Uh, just a little synopsis here. You've got some great projects happening. Uh, you're going to be doing a tour, a rock and roll tour. You got something? Oh, no, it's not a rock tour. So I'm with uh, Paul Stanley and uh, uh, that guy from Death Leopard and uh, the guy from the Rolling Stones. Yeah, and and a few others. And I'm in I'm in Wentworth Galleries down up and down the East Coast. And you know we're doing they they're putting me on an American tour, which is great. You know it's what, what mostly with uh, yeah and and. Uh, then I'm having a show right now in Palm Beach and another one in Nantucket. Well, one thing that's, uh, again, we have about a minute and a half. One thing that's really cool is that we were contacted, uh, ATS Communications, we're, we're, we're helping uh, Giovanni out in some aspects. And uh, we were contacted, and uh, two of his wonderful paintings are going to be going into the Heritage Auction Platinum Auction, which is uh, the uh, biggest uh, auction uh, of the world. It's the biggest in the country uh, in August. Uh, one of Kobe Bryant and one of uh, Michael Jordan. They are spectacular works. Gee. And actually, I want to do more of that. Uh, mm. uh, I, sure. I, want, I want to permeate that throughout all of the world through the auction houses. And, because you know, not only in galleries and museums, I think I'm in like 18 or 20 museums right now. And I want to, I want to permeate it. And we do a lot of big like companies and all that stuff. Good for you. Yeah, it, yeah. 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 Real quick. All right. Is it still as much fun for you? One, just answer yes, no. I'm like six years old. <laughs> That's good. Right. Stay that I'm age. A six year old kid. And, and I, uh, Carissa, right? She, I, I, uh, she can tell you right here. The, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. Gee, let me tell you, we, we've got to go, but we have made, we've made. Let everybody look into these, uh, the heritage. It's going to be the coolest thing that happens on the planet. It's only the first 
the fir- the first one. We wanted to go a little light to do it. All right, that's how we'll start. Then Listen, go. So. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, you you made the peri- people of the Merrimack Valley very very proud of Absolutely. you, and we wish you the best going forward, brother. Oh, Thank you, my friend. friend. But Take don't care. Drink the water. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure chatting Take with you. Take care, Giovanni <laughs> De Quinto. Uh, interesting guy, huh? What a great Outstanding. guy. Outstanding. You know, he's got the, he's, uh, we've had a lot of interaction with him. Uh, he's got a heart of gold. One thing he's very caring. I like his personality. Yeah. He's very, very caring. And he's, he's just a brilliant guy. I think I like him better than I like you. Well, that's, that's okay. All right, Mike, you've been a good show, David. Great job today Thank on you. the videos and on the uh, images. Thank you so much to our viewers and listeners. You know, go on to his website, GiovanniDeCunto.com. You're going you're gonna to be amazed at his work. With that being said, have a great week. And remember, if you can't make fun of yourself, please don't make fun of anyone. The yeah, word America, man, that's a beautiful It really is. Word. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Have a great Stay week. cool. Ciao. Arrivederci. Ciao, ciao. Buonanotte. A presto. Ciao. Che la luna menzumara, mamma mia, mamma mia. Figlia mia, tu da dare, mamma mia, pensate. Mamma la voglio stagamme, voglio marita. Hey! That would have been good to know an hour ago.